What's up guys, my name is Dr. Ross Bernstein. I'm a veterinarian. I'm gonna to talk to you guys today about an ear surgery called a TICABO, or total ear canal ablation and bulla osteotomy. So it's basically a fancy name for a procedure that actually removes the total, the whole ear canal of a dog. And so this surgery is actually, it's one of the highest reported owner satisfaction surgery. So it's, it's a surgery that can be used for dogs that have chronic, chronic and recurrent ear infections, or they could also benefit from the surgery if there's a mass such as a tumor that's confined to the ear canal, but it's considered one of the most highest owner satisfaction surgeries because these are dogs that have had ear infections for many years, two, three, four, four years, and you, you've tried to give them medications, you've tried to clean out their ears, you've tried tons of stuff, but nothing works. And it happens because sometimes they get so much inflammation in their ears that their canals become what's called stenotic or tightened down. And so you can't even get the, those antibiotic uh, medications down into where they need to be. Sometimes there's a mass there and you can't get medication past that mass to where it needs to go. And all this inflammation makes it very painful. It's irritating, they smell bad, it's gross, it's uncomfortable for the dog. And it's also a huge hassle for the owners because they start being stinky and you know your dog's uncomfortable. So this surgery, it's very effective. It's called a Tikabo. Let me go over with uh, go over some anatomy with you guys. So, this is a model of the canine ear. So there's a this is the pinna out here or the outer ear flap. This is the vertical part of the canal. This is the horizontal part. Now we get into this is what's referred to as the outer ear. Now we're gonna this is the tympanic membrane. This is the bulla. So if we go back to the name. Uh, of the surgery called a total ear canal ablation bulla osteotomy, what we're gonna be doing is removing this entire outer portion of the ear canal and making a hole into this bulla. Now this is a bone, it's a circular bone. Sometimes these dogs can get nasty infections where this fills up with fluid and fluid can get down here and if there's so much gross stuff in here, sometimes hair, Sometimes the canal is so tight and stenotic that none of that moisture can get out and it just creates a really, really nice environment for bacteria to grow and proliferate. And so this is actually, if we're gonna go on a little tangent how a dog hears, but uh, similar, similar to us, sound waves, sound energy comes through here, hits the tympanic membrane, this vibrates, this makes all these bones move in a, in a different way. And depending on that amplification, that sends a signal to the brain, which the dog can interpret uh, the different amplitude and frequency of the sound waves into what they know as sound. And for us, sounds or language, different types of stuff like that. So this is the outer ear. This is the middle ear. This is the inner ear. Right here is the bulla again. Um, so this surgery, it does have some Complications, I'm gonna draw those for you guys on the board. I'm just gonna uh, do a little bit of a, again, demonstration of what uh, the surgery entails. So here we are. We have the, let me get a marker that works. So we have the outer ear canal right here. Here's the pinna. There's the vertical component of the canal. Vertical ear canal. Then there's the horizontal part of the canal.
In the surgery, basically what we do is we make a T-shaped T-shaped incision, which goes around here. Uh, this whole canal is removed, so this is taken away, and then we go in. We there are different ways to do it. You can use a ronger, which is a type of surgical instrument. We can also use a high-speed burr, which we make a hole in here, and we go in and we want to clean all this out. By cleaning it out, we want to scrape it away and make it so that there's just bone left, no epithelium. So that's really important because those epithelial cells can continue to secrete mucus uh, and they can continue to make cells that will eventually, if we take this away, there'll be no way for them to escape the ear. So we have to clean all that out. It gets rid of the infection. It also gets rid of any glandular cells that are in there that can create an environment for bacteria to pro proliferate. So there is, that leads us to one of our complications, that there is the chance that when we're doing the surgery, we aren't able to get all of that out, whether that's based on the dog's anatomy or just the tools can't reach there, or sometimes it just happens, and that's, it's a low chance, but it does happen. One of the other complications is, there's a big nerve right here, called the facial nerve. This nerve goes to the side of the head that controls blinking, does other stuff too, but that's probably the most important. Uh, so it controls a blink, and so when we're in here doing surgery to remove this canal, we can get very close to that nerve and we can, we retract it, but sometimes we don't always see it. Hopefully we don't cut it, but one of the complications is that we are getting close there, and so you can have a neuropraxia or a malfunctioning nerve post-operatively, and so because that nerve controls the dog's ability to blink, they might not be able to blink temporarily after the surgery. Usually it resolves once all the inflammation goes away. Another complication that they might have is obviously they, I mean, they probably can't hear going into the surgery but they're not gonna be able to hear afterwards. Now, dogs still do great. They can feel vibrations. They can still see. Um, they can hear from the other ear if that one's not affected. So that shouldn't really be a problem. Um, going back to this part in the bulla, oftentimes these dogs have been treated with antibiotics and medications for many years. And so sometimes in here, they can be growing pretty nasty infections, which sometimes can be what's called resistant infections. So we always, when we're in there, we're gonna be taking a culture, which means we're gonna take a sample of the stuff that's in there and submit it for culture and sensitivity, which means we put it, we send it to the lab, and they put it in a petri dish and basically see which, which bacteria can grow, and then test it to a, an array of different antibiotics and see if what's growing in there is, is a what's called resistant infection, meaning it's not gonna respond to those antibiotics. Now, there is a chance that, because it's been on so many medications, that this bacteria growing in here is gonna be one of those resistant ones. And so, that's the case we wanna know so that we can put them on an appropriate antibiotic moving forward. Um, so yeah, one of the last complications is, it's a low risk, but there is a major blood vessel nearby, so bleeding is always a risk. There's always a risk of infection or uh, incisional dehiscence, which basically means that the incisions fall apart. The most common spot is gonna be right here, where if this is a T-shaped incision, it's gonna be right in the middle where the T is. And then because we are making an incision around here, this pinna can flop in a different way than they did before surgery. So. It's just a cosmetic change, but sometimes owners are upset that their ears might not look the same afterwards, but really it's just a cosmetic thing and it wouldn't affect their quality of life. So that is, I guess, something that you should know before going into it. So that's actually the ins and outs of the surgery. So post-operatively, like I said before, they are going to be deaf. They're not going to be able to hear because we are taking out their whole ear canal. They're going to have sutures in here. And so that skin incision is going to take 10 to 14 days to heal. So we would have a recheck examination in 10 to 14 days. 
of course they're going to go home in a cone or an e-collar so that they don't scratch at their incision. Scratching there can definitely tear out those sutures and predispose them to developing an infection. So we don't want that. And then of course we'll get back to you with the results of the culture and sensitivity. And hopefully at the end of those two weeks they can go back to being completely normal. And that's why it's one of the most highest rated owner satisfaction surgeries that exist because these dogs have gone through years of medications and treatment that just hasn't worked. So this kind of just takes the problem and gets rid of it. That's the idea. Now, there is a small chance that some of this epithelium uh, or infection we didn't get rid of. And so we do, and there's no way to predict this before going to surgery, which dogs will have that epithelium that we won't be able to get all of it and dogs that we will, but there's a small chance that it can regrow and continue to produce, it can continue to uh, produce fluid and um, I guess release its glandular material, but we won't know that before surgery or going into it. And so if you're a couple of months out from surgery, six months out, and they get a, a swelling in the region of their surgery site, then that is a reason that or an indication that we might not have been able to clear all that epithelium out and that's the reason to go back to surgery but that the risk the chances of that happening are very low and it usually doesn't happen so those are basically the ins and outs of the Tikabo procedure called a Tikabo there you go And thanks again for watching.